How are you guys? Yeah, you know it is very important to have photos, eh? Uh, I'm from Arua. My name is Sundiata. After university, I used to chill at Arua Park so much. Then we lost a guy at Arua Park that time. So we needed a photo of him that we can create a portrait that we'll use around to move around soliciting for money to support the burial. But this guy doesn't have any photo of himself. The photos on Facebook are very funny. It is of him smoking shisha. <laughs> Eating my rungi. <laughs> eh? There was no photo. So he buried the guy. We had to use the mother's photo on his grave. <laughs> then we captioned, on the grave we captioned, this woman's son died. Okay? So take photos at every opportunity you have. One day I went to church. Okay? I went to church. Uh, there's a born again church where I stay nearby. I was bored and they play very good music. So I went to enjoy myself. If you've ever been to a born again church, you'll realize something. You will always find yourself be praying behind one guy who prays too much. Eh? Like he shouts too much and you are forced to think maybe your prayer is not reaching God. Man, I was praying calmly. God blessed me with success. God opened the door of success for me. The guy was aggressive. God kicked for me the door of success. Eh? I was like, God, show me the way that God slapped me to the right way. I was like, ah, this is the prayer. I abandoned my own prayer point. I started confirming his own prayer point. God was, <laughs> I was like, God, provide me salary. Provide me big salary. I was like, that is the one. God, salary, salary, salary. God, provide me rent for the whole year. Rent for the whole year. I was like, God, rent, rent, rent. God consumed, Holy Ghost consumed the spirit of poverty from my family. I said, Holy Ghost, eat it, eat it, eat it. Then he started diverting. God, chase women away from my life. I was like, ah, my friend. Pray the right prayers. You are going off topic. Eh? God, remove the women from my inbox. I was like, God, remove them, bring them to me. I want, bring them, bring them, bring them. Eh? I was privileged enough to go to campus. I went to Mubze. And then one of the worst things that will happen to you when you're at campus, to have a roommate who is a born again. I had a roommate called Okumu. That guy was oversaved. The guy was chronic born again, too harsh. See, a roommate is supposed to be like your brother. Cooperates in cooking, cleaning the room. And most importantly, most importantly, when your guest comes, your girlfriend, he needs to have common sense and he leaves, he goes. Man, members of Kumu doesn't want to know. There was a girl called Kevin. I was crushing on. Is there any Kevin here? Ah, there's a Kevin here. You can see. There was a girl called Kevin. I was crushing on. That girl was hardcore. She was very hard. I tried giving her money. She ate my money. I could take her for date. She eats the food. She was just very hard. But no women, eh? They have something called the point of mercy. After giving you a headache, they will reach a point called the point of mercy. They start pitying you. Then they said, ah, I've given him a lot of headache. Let me just give him some, okay? Now, that girl had reached that, that, Kevin had reached that point of, point of mercy. She told me she's going to visit me to appreciate my efforts. <laughs> now, she visited me when I had my roommate, Okumu, there. Man, members, there's nothing I did not do to make Okumu leave. The guy refused. I even told Okumu, man, Okumu, it is raining, man. Didn't you leave your blanket outside? He said, ah, lately I don't cover myself. Let rain beat it. Let rain beat it. I was like, oh, man. I think you have a coursework test. Are you not sure that you have a coursework test right now? That, ah, coursework test is just out of 30%. I will read for the finals and get the 70. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. That thing pained me. Then Okumu realized I was angry. Eh? So he sent me an SMS that I'm going to leave the room in 30 minutes. So in these 30 minutes, I went with this babe to the canteen to chill. To do what? Chill. To chill. I didn't know behind my back, Okumu was a hypocrite. 
This guy went to the shop and bought wallpapers of Jesus. Posted them all over the room. Jesus everywhere. Jesus. Photos of Mother Mary. Posted them everywhere. He bought Bible. Put there. Quran. Put there. Uh, what else? Rosary. Put them there. When we came back, I looked at the room. Members, if you want to enter heaven and you see these photos, you will not do anything. You will not do. I summoned my courage to do. I saw Jesus on the wall. Normally, Jesus in photos, he poses like this on the cross. Then his head is down. Not so. But in this photo, this time, Jesus was looking at me like this. Just imagine that situation. You want to sin. And the guy who died for your sin is looking at you. What do you do? I chose to sin because that was why he died for me. Before I knew, I saw a scripture on the wall. Romans 6, 28. The wages of sin is death. <laughs> but I convinced myself and told myself, something must kill a man. Something must kill a man. I love the response. The cops in the States. States is America, eh? Understand? America. I love the response cops in the States give to emergency situation. The response they give, you guys. You find a woman is walking on the street with her daughter. Then kidnappers drive, grab the daughter, and they drive away. Kidnappers. Members, this woman will call the police. She calls. You find the police calling her down. Madam, calm down, calm down. We are going to send the rescue team right now. Calm down, madam. Two minutes. The police is already on the road. With pursuit, they are pursuing the kidnappers, driving like a movie. Two minutes, you find the NYPD, that's the New York Police Department, they are aware. The LAPD, they are aware. The UPP, that's the US Police Presence, they are aware. The NATO, they are responding to the situation. Just two minutes, you will see in two minutes, Fox News is aware. CNN is already reporting the news, both on ground and in air with a helicopter, following the scenario. You see police is exchanging bullets with kidnappers. Bullets! That is America. Clap for the American police. American police. Uganda police. Uganda police. Ah. January 2021, last year in Arua, along a road called Adumi Road, a lady was walking with her daughter. I think she was from the bank, putting on a pink dress, walking. Then before I know... They kidnapped her daughter, and then the woman started shouting, My daughter, my daughter, my daughter. I was like, Ah, madam, what is the problem? That they have kidnapped my daughter. I said, This is serious. Let me call the police. I removed my phone. 9999. I dialed. First of all, I had the number you are calling is not available at the moment. They are always not available. I said, No, let me try again. I dialed. The number you are calling is busy. I was like, Police, you are playing with us. I called the final time, and the guy picked. Man, you've never talked to a Lugwara police. You have never. The guy picked up. My friend, why are you calling us many times? Why are you calling us many times? Hmm? We have seen. We have seen. Why are you calling us many times? Hmm? So, what do you want? What is your name? I said, my name is Sundiata. And there's a scenario here. Uh, there's a woman walking and kidnappers carrying pangas and AK-47 shooting around have kidnapped some. That my friend talks slowly. Talks slowly. You are rushing these things. Talk slowly. You said they have carried what? I said they have carried pangas. That, hey, my friend, wait. They have carried what? Pangas? Do they look sharp? I said, yes, they are sharp. Then they asked me, so what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Eh? Can you run? I was like, yes, I found it. I can run, but we need to save this girl. That really, my friend, they have pangas. Eh? How old is this girl here? I said she's eight years old. That eight years. But eight years, she has lived enough. She has lived enough. Eh? I was like, Afande, we need to save this situation. We need to save this situation. Now, the Afande asked me, can you please describe for us the criminals? I said, these guys are here. They are wearing blue shoes and putting on uh, blue jeans. I was like, wait, 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 my friend, wait. You said they are putting on blue jeans. Wait there. That is Aluma. That is Aluma. He turned to his colleague, Afande Kumu. That is Aluma. I know them. They have terrorized this area. Yeah, we know Aluma very well. They were the ones who stole animals from the president's farm. They were the ones who stole the president's car while he was in Arua here. I know Aluma very well. He's very notorious. My friend, tell that woman, this girl has gone. This girl has gone. Tell that woman she has gone. 
But one thing I've come to realize with the police officers, eh, they work with these thieves together. They work hand in hand. Eh? They often they told me, so my friend, this is the truth. You have some two million. Because I know these thieves, that is Aluma, I know them. You have some two million. I was like, Afande, you're now talking about two million. How are you going to rescue this girl? Like, don't worry, this is part of the rescue. Do you have two million? And I had to ask the madam, madam, do you have two million shillings there? Madam told me she can arrange. Two minutes later, the Afande made a call. I just saw the kidnapper coming with the girl. And you guys, have you talked to Afande Charles? <laughs> 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 I was like, yes. A kidnapper handed the girl. What pained me? The guy even wrote for us a receipt. He wrote a receipt. We gave two million. He wrote a receipt of 1.5 million. Then he told us, if a founder Charles comes here, tell him you gave me two million, not 1.5. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that has been my time. Thank you so much. My name is Sundiata. Your tracks today.